Welcome back. So in the last couple videos, we've introduced the, the problem of trying to uh, find minima and maxima of likelihoods uh, using numerical methods. We went through kind of the nuts and bolts of how the algorithms for numerical optimization work. And now I want to get into the weeds and say, how do we uh, apply those algorithms in R to actually do numerical maximum likelihood? I'm going to start with a simple example and a one, an example that we've seen before and actually know the analytical solution to. So our simplest model uh, is our, our observed data Y is distributed normally with some mean A and some uh, standard deviation sigma. So how do we numerically optimize that? So the steps for numerically optimizing something are very similar initially to analytically optimizing them. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write down the likelihood and then take the logs. Now, when we're doing that numerically, the write down the likelihood and take the log step occurs in code. So the crux of writing down a likelihood for numerical optimization is writing it down as a function. So here's an example of taking this likelihood, normal with a mean and a variance, and writing that down uh, numerically. So first thing, I need to give my function a name. So I'll just call this LK norm for normal likelihood. Uh, and I'm going to say that this is a function. So my name of the function equals function. Uh, and then the things that get passed in are going to be the parameter, the parameters as a vector. So this, this model has two parameters but I need to pass in all the parameters as a vector because the numerical optimization algorithms just, they always expect a vector of parameters. So this is, in this case, is gonna be a vector of length two. And then I'm gonna also pass in the data that I'm gonna fit. Within that function, I need to actually do the calculation of my likelihood. So the first thing I wanna do is write down, this is a normal likelihood, so I'm gonna use the dnorm function to calculate the normal density. I then need to put the data in because I'm calculating the normal, you know, the probability of the data. And then I'm going to put in the parameters. So the first parameter in the D norm is the mean, which we're calling A here. The second is the standard deviation. Uh, and see here how we're, even though this model has, you know, an A and a standard deviation, we're going to reference those as beta one and beta two because beta always has to be a vector. Okay. Uh, now we need to take the logs of that likelihood and, you know, most probability distributions in R have this handy feature where you just say log equals true and it returns the log density instead of the uh, actual density. And I will always advocate for doing that rather than taking the likelihood and then taking the, lo the logs. And it's because uh, it's going to do a more accurate computation. So imagine if I took a normal density and it rounded off the normal density to zero, and then I took the log of that, it's gonna give me a negative infinity. Well, if I do the calculation in the log domain to begin with, I'm gonna get an, uh, an answer uh, that is gonna give me a, a, an exact number. So I've, I've got my normal, I've got my log, and, I've, and then if you remember, when we calculate a probability distribution over multiple observations, we need to multiply all those individual probabilities, or in the log domain, we need to sum up those log likelihoods. <clears throat> so then we use the sum function uh, to do that. Sorry, the sum function to do that. And then uh, the negative sign here is a convention. So um, it, it occurs because most of the algorithms that we use for numerical optimization are set up to minimize functions. And so if we just change this from a like log likelihood to a negative log likelihood, instead of maximizing that positive log likelihood, we're gonna minimize the negative log likelihood and we'll get the same answer. Also related to that, if you remember from AIC and things like that, uh, what those functions actually want is a negative log likelihood as well. So we're gonna use that as a score. Okay, so we have this function that calculates uh, log likelihoods. And we can use that function just to check, well, first is to check that it works and to get some intuition. So if I go to my R console and I generate a data set Y that's just a bunch of random numbers 
10 random numbers with a mean of 3.5 and a standard deviation of two, uh, I can say, what's the likelihood that of observing this data given the parameters of a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one? So here I'm just passing in a vector and it gives me back that likelihood. If I instead put in a likelihood of 3.5 and a standard deviation of two, I get back another likelihood. And this negative log likelihood is lower, so we're moving in the right direction. Um, and so the idea here is you have a function that, that you can evaluate. You put in a proposed set of parameters as a vector, and it come, gives you back the uh, likelihood. Now, in practice, you're not going to do that much yourself. Mostly what you're going to do is write down your likelihood function, put in your initial guess, and verify that when you put in your initial guess, your function returns something valid. Uh, you want to do that before you do any sort of optimization just to for two reasons. One, to make sure uh, that you didn't write your function down wrong. So like if there's an error in your function and it you know blows up, you want to find that out uh, before you try to optimize it. And two is to verify that you get a, a reasonable answer from your initial guess. So if you put in your initial guess and it gives you back NA, it doesn't work. If it gives you back my, you know, infinity, it doesn't work or not a number. So these sorts of values, if, if you're starting at not a number or NA, there's no way to optimize that because um, you're not on, essentially you're not on the map. It's, it's okay. So we've, we've written down our likelihood. We've checked that it works, that we get a value back if we plug things into our likelihood function. So now we want to numerically optimize that. And we're going to use that, do that using functions. And so there's a bunch of different functions in R that do numerical optimization. Uh, one of the more handy ones is Optum. Uh, they all have the same general structure though, because they're all going to take in a specific set of arguments, not always in this order, but they always take in the same basic arguments. First is what is your initial guess? In this case, my initial guess might be a mean of zero standard deviation of one. Uh, second, what is the function you want to optimize? You literally are passing the function in as the argument to another function. And then third is your, your the arguments to your function. So whenever you do numerical optimization, uh, that algorithm assumes that the first argument to the function is the parameters that you're trying to optimize and that they are passed as a vector. If you need to pass anything else to your function, in this case, like the data, you need to tell that to R. Um, and so you need to pass these things by name, essentially because what Optum is going to do is it, it has its, some of its own arguments. And if it sees things that are different, you know, that are, are named differently than the things it uses, it's going to go, oh, you're passing something in that's not something you're trying to tell the optimization algorithm. I'm assuming you're trying to tell that to the function. So we'll just pass that on to the function. So you always have to pass these by name. Okay, so what happens when you call this optimum function? So you're gonna get a bunch of stuff back. So the first thing you're gonna get back is, uh, well, you're gonna, get a, um, you're gonna get a list of things back so you can access them by, by name for the different parts. And the first part you get is called par. And par is your best estimate of the parameters. So here, you know, it came back as the best estimate of the mean was uh, 3.8977, so it was about 3.9, and then a standard deviation of 2.32. Um, and you know, that's not exactly 3.5 and 2, but that's not because the algorithm didn't work, but that's actually because. Um, this is just a sample size of 10. And so the actual sample mean here and sample standard deviation are essentially the same as what you got back from Optum. It's going to give you back what's called the value. And that's going to be the value of your function at those best fit parameters. So remember, it's, it's evaluating the function. And sometimes when you're optimizing something, you want to know what the parameters were. And sometimes you just want to know what the value of the function is. So you're just trying to find the best value of, of in the y dimension. Uh, next, it gives you the counts, which is just how many guesses it took to find that. So it, it tried this proposing, accepting, rejecting 87 times before it gave up. Uh, and then it gives you convergence, which is that check 
of whether it thought it was successful. And, so, and for some algorithm choices, it'll tell you why, like did it stop, which stopping condition did it hit? And more importantly, if it didn't hit a stopping condition, it'll give you an error. So, so it's always important to look at what Optum gives you and to check, first and foremost, check this convergence number to make sure that it converged. The other thing I usually check is that my best estimate of my parameters is different than my initial guess. So sometimes, you know, the, the algorithm will just kind of get stuck in one or more of the, the uh, parameter values that it won't move. It'll just get stuck at the initial guess and that like, the function value makes sense. Cool, so that's you know, the basics of how we do numerical optimization. Again, we, we write down our likelihood, we take the logs. That step occurs uh, numerically in terms of implementing your likelihood as a function. And then the, the equivalent of taking derivatives and setting equal to zero is passing it to an optimization algorithm that goes through this numerical algorithm of looking for a minimum parameter space. Um, and then you get parameters back. Cool.